Hi, Bentu Agni, I think that's right. Hi, Wave, Wave, Wave. TJ Aswar, hi. Uh, Ellie the Elon, I hope that's right. My Shutterbug. Um, hi, Montgomery Kate. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lynette. Hi, Lynette, how are you? Hi, Melanie Scott, 1111. Happy Thursday uh, to all of you. I hope wherever you are, you're having a okay day, a good enough day. Hi, sweet Donna. Hi, Sportster. Oh, David Phoenix Interior Design. Hi, David. Um, thank you all for joining uh, me this morning. It's the morning here in California. Um, thank God our air is doing a little bit better. Um, I'm super excited to be speaking with somebody that I think all of you um, will be interested in. I watched this film, The Social Dilemma, last night here um, all by myself as I'm living alone. I'm totally empty nested now. So I watched this film last night, The Social Dilemma, because I've heard so many people talking about it. So many young people, so many people my age. And uh, I think for any of us who are spending any time on social media, this is a really important film. It's critical, actually, which is why I wanted to speak to the director of it. Um, Jeff Orlowski is the director of Social Dilemma, and it's a really heavy film, actually. It's really thought-provoking. Uh, in many places, it was kind of above my head, but it was scary. It was scary about how much these big companies know about us how much they're infiltrating our thoughts, how much um, this entire system has gone awry, how the information you get is different than the information I get, and how each of us really now more than ever are responsible for our social media habits, what we consume, what we don't consume, checking it. And uh, also it was super interesting about the havoc that it's causing on our young people so much increased anxiety, so much increased depression. Um, it, it was really scary. It made me sit there and think, wow, I'm really glad I don't have little kids right now. Um, and we used to have in my house, when our kids were growing up, we had a rule that they couldn't get a cell phone until seventh grade. They were always the last ones uh, to get a cell phone. And we did that um, to try to kind of put some guardrails on their social media consumption. It's nothing like it is today. Um, that was before Instagram, that was just about a cell phone. And um, I think it's really important for parents to see uh, the film. I think uh, it's important for all of us to see the film and to take a deep look at our own social media habits and to take a look at what we're consuming and wonder why we're getting what we're getting. Anyway, that's these are all the questions I want to talk to Jeff about. So hopefully he's going to be joining us from The Social Dilemma. Social Dilemma, you can watch it. Oh, there it is on Netflix. Netflix, we're going to be uh, sharing this interview also in the Sunday paper this Sunday because I think it's a super important film. This is a super important discussion. And I'm really hopeful that I will understand Jeff when he speaks to me. Oh, there he is. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Hi, Maria. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you. And congratulations awesome. on this film. Thank you so much for uh, doing this, for joining us um, uh, to talk about what is, as you say, one of the greatest existential threats of our time. Are you getting yeah. an incredible reaction to the film, Jeff? Uh, it has been phenomenal. It has been overwhelming. Um, we've been live now on Netflix for two weeks, just over two weeks now, and it's been in the top 10 uh, this time. So it's been, I, we feel incredibly humbled, but it's uh, just been an amazing response to the film. So I read that you were actually uh, working on a film on climate change, and then you switched gears because you saw this mm. as as important a threat to our humanity uh, as climate change and kind of it, towards the end of the film, they say that kind of AI or social media has actually checkmated our humanity. Why is this such a big threat? Because so many people see it as kind of mindless entertainment. Yeah, I, I think the average person doesn't realize how filtered their online experience is. I think that's really one of the, the core things. You know, we engage with these systems and we start feeding it what we like. Um, whether that. we're explain that so people yeah. understand. 
So, I mean, anything that you engage with, if you literally click like or heart, it is now adding a data point to your digital profile of what you like. Um, and even if you don't click and engage with it, it is still tracking things. It knows how long you're looking at posts. Um, in the case of Facebook, Facebook, any website on the internet that has a Facebook like button on it is tracking whether or not you have been to that site. So you don't even have to click like on that thing on that website. It still knows that, oh, Maria went to this site today and she's going to a bunch of sites like this. Facebook has um, some of the numbers I've heard, uh, 26,000 or 29,000 data points about each of us. Wow. So imagine like 29,000 entries about this is Maria's preferences. This is what she likes. This is where she goes to. This is This is the world that we can feed her to get her to come back to whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or YouTube, they all operate in the same function. And so if I am feeding this digital version of me, this digital avatar, this profile, um, certain inputs, and I keep telling it, this is what I'm interested in. It just shows me more and more that stuff. You know, I, there are countless friends that I used to have conversations with about politics and it just gets harder and harder to have a conversation around politics. I'm not seeing what they see, and they're not seeing that, what I see. That was the most interesting, that, not the most, there were so many really interesting things about this film, but what was super interesting, we always talk about, we blame politicians, right, for this divide, for their conversation, and they are in many ways responsible for, you know, kind of the heated rhetoric that so many of us are uh, seeing, but you're also said in here that um, these big computer companies, these big technology companies are actually feeding us information that is dividing us even more. Right. And, and I think that's, that's not the intention of any programmer, right? No mm -hmm. computer programmer sat there and said, hmm, how can I politically polarize Maria and put her in her own filter bubble? That wasn't the goal. The goal was just like, what's going to get you to come back and use the platform more? What do you like? Right. And there's this mindset around engagement that is, I, I, you know, I honestly, I just think we're measuring the wrong thing. Like we measure the counts, the number of likes, how, yes. many, how many hits a particular thing gets. So this has affected journalism. Journalists are now, and, and publications are basing their coverage and their reporting on like, how do we get SEO optimization? And how do we get this to rise to the top? And did it get enough clicks? And, and journalism is now, falling victim to this system as opposed to asking questions like how do we be the most trustworthy news outlet how do we provide better coverage that helps inform people's lives how do we give a diversity of perspectives those are more important questions that we could be asking but we have a heart it's harder to measure right and so yeah. we measure the easiest thing we measure how many you know how many um views did this youtube video get and it, it, it's basically just a huge popularity contest that's operating on the internet that's devoid of any reference to truth, any reference to quality journalism, any reference to like what, what is meaningful um, to people's lives. Yeah, and you, were also, you say in the film actually that it has ruined any kind of uh, shared sense of facts, that none mm -hmm. of us are dealing with the same facts, the same truth, and that mm -hmm. fake news does a hundred times better yeah. than six so times real news. Six yeah, times six, um, fake news spreads six times faster on Twitter than the truth does, right? So how, and how do we decide whether we're getting fake news or quote the real news? We we are not deciding it. An algorithm that is optimized to show you what is going to keep you there, right? And this is the thing: their our time equals their money like in a very literal and direct way. The more time we spend on the platforms, the more money they make, the more we come back to this ecosystem. And each of these platforms are competing for our time. So you've got a 15 minute lunch break. Are you going to Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or like fill in the blank? Um, ironically, like this is the first Instagram live I've ever done. I actually wasn't even sure how to use it because I don't use Instagram. Like this is this is not um, part of my uh, my tech usage. I was a really, really heavy social media user in 2016, 20, I mean, up from 2005 or when, it, you know, 2006, whenever Facebook started up until um, 2016, I was on very, very regularly. And then I watched, I, I spoke to these subjects. I learned from these subjects about what was going on and it completely changed my relationship. And so I actually then 
actively removed myself from honestly all social media. I, I stopped using it. And for me personally, it worked really, really well. Like it, it improved my quality of life. It improved my mental health. Um, and I switched over to news sources to get my news. You know, the majority of Americans now get most or some most of their information through social media platforms. Can right? you talk, so, talk, Jeff, about how it has helped you kind of getting off of social media, how that helped mm -hmm. your mental health. And in the film, uh, you have experts talking about the devastation, the mental health uh, crisis that is happening, mm -hmm. particularly, particularly among our young people, yeah. uh, young girls, young boys, because of social media, the the anxiety, the depression, the increases in, in anxiety, depression, suicide rates. And then at the end, they talk about to parents, the advice to parents is limit your kids' social media use. Make sure that you don't, that you have rules about it in your house. And then you have a film in the film where the mother is really distraught trying to put rules at her table uh, for social media and the actual addiction that kids are feeling. They're mm -hmm. actually withdraw addicted from the devices. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for parents out there who have kids yeah. deeply immersed in this? Yeah, that's a really great question. Uh, I would honestly, I would encourage people to both watch the film and then to watch it with their families or with their kids' families, those friends. Have the yeah. shared conversation around, okay, all of our teenagers are going through this together. How can we allow for a way for people to still connect and have community, but not be influenced negatively by these social media platforms? A lot of youth that we've spoken to say they don't actually want to be on these platforms, but they feel forced to because their friend circle is on or everybody that they know is on or the social opportunities come up there. Um, so how do we have a collective movement to disengage communities from it? Talk to your PTA. How do you have a, a rule within the school to get social media out of the school as a whole, right? And, and is that possible? This is, is that possible, you think? I, I think absolutely it's possible. It might be challenging, but it's completely possible. Um, there are, uh, there's a whole movement around wait until eighth. Um, there's a movement around don't let your kids be on social media, as, as somebody says in our film, until high school. I, I think that's actually a really, really good rubric. Middle school is already really, really hard. Yeah. Uh, why are we adding the additional layer of um, body image concerns and social media, like all the pressure that comes through it um, in middle school? So, I, I mean, I don't have kids right now, but if I did have kids right now, my mindset would be no smartphone until high school, no social media until high school. Um, those would be my personal stances. But to really work with your close friends, the, your, your child's friends and their families to talk through, how do we do this together? Um, how do we have a team? I mean, text messaging and Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, they operate very, very differently, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the phrase that's used in the film, if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product, right? And yes. so when you think about messages that are coming in and the business model that's operating them, like you pay for your iPhone or your Android phone, you pay for FaceTime, you pay for a Zoom conversation, and you can still have conversations with your friends in a quality way through text messaging or through FaceTimes or through audio chats. Um, that's real connection. Um, but the platforms that we're not paying for have a different incentive, have a different model at play. So I, I thought, you know, if the, the, as I said, I thought the film was fascinating and so much uh, to talk about. And I have one uh, child who talks a lot, child, she's an adult, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. who talks a lot about unplugging, unplugged herself uh, mm -hmm. from Instagram, is kind of uh, talking a lot about the effects. But she's a lone wolf kind of out there. Right her friends. So how do you, how do you get people to, as you say, talk to your PTA, but how do you, as a parent, go against this tide? I used to have so many fights with yeah. my son about yeah. removing the phone from the table. Not anymore, thank God. Right, but, right. Um, you know, do you feel like that there's a movement from the film already starting with people? Uh, absolutely. Around? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the film, you know, my hope is that the film can be a tool and my hope is that the film can be a starting point for these conversations, for recognizing how do we realign our intentions with our attention, right? These right. platforms are just like taking our attention and, you know, you go to YouTube and you wake up two hours later and you're like, how, what just happened, right? And, and that, that experience that can happen is separating 
uh, where our time and attention is going versus what we want in life. And I think that's the question, like, what do we want our technology to support? How do we want to be operate? How do we want to have community with our family? So for me, when I'm with my close family and friends, like, we don't have phones out at the table when we're eating. Um, I, I just actually spent four days camping in the wilderness. I was not, I was like off the grid, as off the grid as I could possibly get. And having a connection with nature that isn't dependent on this device, right? I think it's challenging for, for kids who have been born in this world. Like we remember what the world was like before social media, yeah. right? Like we remember what boredom felt like and where daydreaming happened, right? Now I feel like any time that somebody is even minimally bored, we go to this like digital pacifier, as somebody yeah. says in the film, we yeah. go to the digital pacifier just to fill us with something, to fill this like tiny little moment. You're at a red light in your car and the instinct is to pull your phone out to go check and just to get a little dopamine hit while you're sitting at the red light. I, for me, this, this process of having removed myself from these platforms and having just spent a lot of time thinking about it, like my mindset now is like, I cherish my own time. I cherish, you know, if I feel bored that now leads to creative thought and new ideas and new projects and new concepts or thinking about the people that mean a lot to me that I want to reach out to. And I haven't spoken to this person in a long time. So there's a complete flip that I think is available to us. It's hard and it's challenging because these platforms have been built, literally built to reverse engineer each of our individual vulnerabilities. Like it is just figuring out what are we most susceptible to and continuing to show us that so that we keep coming back. And it's, it's not like I didn't tell a social media platform, I really want articles about this, this, and this that are going to challenge my thoughts, that are going to, you know, improve my thinking as a human being. It's figuring out on its own what it thinks it's going to get me to come back for. So um, there's a huge shift available to us. I think as a society, it's going to be hard to make this shift, but that's where I think we need to have this conversation. Yeah, I think what's really great, um, the conversation, you can have this conversation after watching the film, you can have it as a business, you can have it as parents, you can have it for relationships, uh, you can have it as a journalist, you can have it in terms of politics. I think that that to me was the most interesting thing about how divided we are when I Google, I'm getting something completely different perhaps than you. Right. And so we're not even right. reading the same stuff that our kind of basic facts are gone. We're not even dealing in the same society anymore. And, and, right. and kind of the many of the whistleblowers, so to speak, that you have in here say, we've got to change this. It's run rampant. How do we take an animal like this that's so complex, that's so complicated, that's so fast? I thought the right part in there where the, the computer has become so fast and mm -hmm. our brains have not kept up with it. Right. But how has it made our lives better, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a huge, I love technology. I'm a very pro-technologist. Um, the line that we use in the film, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. Right. I think that's a really good, easy indicator for a lot of people around like, is this designed to serve our needs or not? You know, I grew up using Adobe Photoshop. That was a tool that was super powerful that allowed me to make my art and make my craft. Um, you know, when we do filmmaking, we're using these tools all the time, these digital tools. Um, but it's there to serve my intentions and my purpose, right? Like, it, this, yeah. is, this is something that's going to be really, really difficult for us to shift. This is, I make the comparison often to climate change, where many years ago, an industry figured out they could extract something from nature and make a lot of money off of it. And years later, we realized, oh, shoot, you know, there's a problem here. We see these consequences. And what we have now with this industry, with surveillance capitalism, they had something that we all thought was amazing and beautiful and phenomenal. And look at how it can connect us and the opportunities. And years later, we have realized that the extraction of human nature, the extraction of our time and attention, the building of our digital versions is actually causing all of these unintended consequences. Right. There's a direct parallel there. I mean, it is, it is something where they went in without malicious intent, but we see the consequences on our individual and our collective society. Is this a kind of like, 
I was watching the film and it, it really details the complexity of the problem, how it happened, mm -hmm. what impact it's having on young kids, what impact it's having on journalism, what impact it's having on families, what impact it's having on business. Um, it keeps going, but it only kind of at the very end does it say, well, here are a couple things you can do. Uh, yeah, yeah. But is there a sequel here? Like, oh my okay, goodness, We're, yeah. Here's the problem. But like, I was like, oh my God, now what? What, what are we doing? Right. I talked to some kids who told me, oh, I watched the social dilemma, I unplugged everything. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Just completely unplugged because they're watching me. They're watching great everything. to hear. Yeah. That's great to hear. Uh, <laughs> I think it's great to hear just that the kids are paying attention to it and they're, they're aware of it in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest problem here is that this industry has been operating a shadow business for years now where yeah. the public doesn't really know and understand how they're making money off of us and what's going on. Like the average person isn't aware of a digital model being built around you with, you know, almost 30,000 data points about you. Yeah. Um, so the step one is having the conversation and recognizing the truth of, you know, we don't pay for these things yet. They're worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Like there's a big gap there. Like where is this value coming from? Right. Um, so uh, we don't, as you, as you point out, we don't have really solutions in the film. We're not trying to hit that in a big way, in large part because there's still questions around what are the right solutions and who are the right people to offer these solutions. We are trying with, with our team, um, and if you go to the socialdilemma.com, our team is putting a lot of resources on. To share in a conversation around what can we do? What needs to be done? You know, there is no silver bullet here. Yeah. Just like there's no easy silver bullet to climate change, right? And right. we can talk about the individual things we can do, but we need to talk about the societal things that need to happen and how do we change the companies as a whole. Uh, from my perspective, if these social media companies operate on this advertising-based business model, this micro-targeted, surveillance-driven, attention-extracting, advertising business model, like I won't trust them. I don't have trust over companies that are profiting that way. I have an exchange to have an exchange in value with with the public. Like we need to be the customer that's engaging with these with these platforms. Um, and until that happens, like the trust won't be there for me. I think that's really interesting. You said, who is the person? Who are the people to change this model? Uh, you have a couple of instances in there where you have. Mark Zuckerberg testifying in the Congress. Is this the government? Is this PTAs? Is this parents? Is this me? Mm -hmm. who, who is this? Right. That can kind of and it's several people even in the film have said it's so far gone. This is an animal that probably will be impossible to roll back. Well, my hope is that uh, my hope is that this changes through the tech industry themselves. That they rec recognize this is unsustainable. We are, we, we don't want to become the next tobacco industry or the next sugar industry or the next fossil fuel industry. They're in that stance already. We recognize that those industries are misaligned with humanity's values and needs. And we, we had reckonings with those industries. We're at that same stance with the tech industry now. Like, I don't think they ever intended to destroy democracy, right? They, yeah. they never wanted that to be the case, but they're in this position now where they have their finger on that lever. Um, and that power that they have is is so asymmetrically powerful. So how do e either the only options really are either they change from the inside and they say, no, we're going to do the right thing. We're going to change our model. It's going to take some time. Maybe we lose a little bit of money in the short term, but this is better off in the long term for both society and for our business. Either they do that on their own or that is where government will probably have to step in and take some steps. And I don't know what that regulation might look like, but everybody, need, like our politicians need to be talking about that and thinking about it. Like, what do we do? Like, how do we um, put realign these utilities? They basically become a public utility, but they're not treated as such. How do we realign them to allow them to be these platforms that, yeah. that help society? Yeah, and several people on here said after watching the film, they turned off their notifications uh, in the film. That's yeah. kind of universal. Everybody says, turn off your notifications, turn off your notifications. That's an easy one. Yeah. That's an easy one. But they do also say at the end, speaking of democracy, and we're one month out of an, uh, an election, it really is up to each and every one of us to right. monitor 
our, our right. news sources, right? There are yeah. things you can do to make sure we're not right. getting a diet of fake news. So right. let, me, let me kind of end with that, Jeff. What's the best thing you can do, each and every one of us could do to right. make sure we're getting real news in this next I month? I would say like, I, like I was, I was hinting at earlier, like I don't trust news that I see on social media platforms. So go to real quality journalists and pay them if you can, right? Like many of them offer paid subscriptions. Like I pay multiple news outlets for a subscription yeah. in exchange for the content. So get your news from those places. If you're getting information via social media, if it sounds outrageous, maybe it is outrageous. Look at the source, verify the source before you share it. Um, confirm, is this a legitimate news source or is this something that's just made up that I've never heard of before? There's an entire industry now of people making fake, new fake news for profit just because it's profitable to make lies and post them on social media. Like it's an entirely broken system, right? So how do you get and separate yourself from that? If there's somebody that you disagree with politically, and you've always had like these debates, trade logins, trade phones, like, here's what I see every day, show me what you see every day. Like it's a reality swap that you can do that helps you wait a second, you're seeing all of this stuff like this is this is not what I'm seeing at all. And let's have a conversation around like, okay, let's read these things together. Let's look at these facts together. How do you get down to the actual facts, go past the stories that you're seeing in your feeds and the memes and get down to like, well, what are the authority sources on this? Who actually has the right information? So those are just some simple, simple things that I'd recommend. But um, I, and really, I think one of the big things is to question um, your own stance on things. I mean, for me personally, I had a particular stance on fracking. And while working on this project, I learned that Russia was pushing out anti-fracking propaganda. And I was like, what's going on? How do I know what I know? How do I believe what I believe? Like I was questioning wow. what is my, my stance on fracking? Why do I think that? And how was I maybe influenced by people or organizations that I'm completely unaware of that might be shaping or trying to manipulate the way I see something? So I, I mean, I have really questioned what is my stance and what are the stance of my friend that my friends have um, on particular issues. So uh, th this is, uh, you know, as we're saying, this is a very, very complex thing, but yeah. try to look for those difficult conversations. Don't be fed something that reinforces your worldview and just think that's good and, and everything's settled. Um, it's, it's a real challenge, but I think that's one that we need to, to embrace. I love that. How do I know what I know? Why do I know what I know? That's exactly. something each and every single one of us can, can actually take away from this and mm -hmm. actually have that conversation first and foremost with ourselves. I try to follow people I disagree with on Twitter yeah. just to see what their opinions are. But I think they, let me just say thank you, Jeff, so much for this. Thank the you, Maria. It's called yeah. The Social Dilemma. It's on Netflix. You can go to the socialdilemma.com where these conversations are going on. I just finally, I don't know that wait till eight. What was that? Um, it's a movement around waiting till eighth grade for kids to use social right. media, smartphones. Um, and some of our subjects just suggest high school as like a nice clean rubric as well. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. interesting. Many of the people working, creating social media, yeah. creating all this tech, they all say, I don't let my kids exactly technology. So I always think that's super interesting as well. There's so much to watch in this yeah. film, so much to talk about in this film. It's complicated. It's complex. It's worth watching a second time. I'm going to try to get my yeah. kids to watch it with me because I was like, whoa, what are they talking about there? Yeah, yeah awesome. It's, here. It's, it's in my yeah. head. But anyway, it's a, it's a really important, critical uh, film for our time. It talks about us being the product. It talks about the existential threat of social media. It's not just all, um, you know, fun and games, and it's really dramatically affecting our young people. And yeah. uh, it's up to each and every one of us to put the guardrails on, to question what we know, how we know what we know, and to put limits on what we're doing on these devices. But that said, I want to thank everybody for Absolutely. joining us on Yeah, this thank device. you so much, Maria. Yep. And congratulations on your film. Bravo. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks so much. So the it is called just to remind you again, it's called the social dilemma. You can go to the social dilemma dot com. Uh, you can watch it on Netflix. You can um, if you can, you know, get your friends to watch it and then talk to your friends uh, 
if you have, they have kids the same age as yours, what can we all do together in community in terms of uh, having a joint set of rules? Um, so I think those were really good suggestions. Uh, he is really smart. Wow, that film is like, woo, really smart. A couple times in there, I was like, whoa, I don't understand what's happening in this film. But, um, and I and I said, uh, I'm really glad that my kids uh, weren't subject to all of that at such a young age. But I think that rule of wait till eight or even wait till high school is a really good thing. So s several people on here saying I watched it last night, really eye-opening and scary. I agree with you. Um, eye-opening, scary, thought-provoking, insightful, really smart. And um, he's really smart. And... Um, and it's up to each and every one of us, as I said, to monitor what we uh, read, what we share, to think about what we think, and don't let people make us crazy in this next month. Rise above the noise, find what works for you, and um, make sure that you try to kind of use your dialogue to bring people together as opposed to alienate people. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, good conversation says simplified business flow. I like that name. Uh, thank you for sharing. Turned off my notifications says Natalie after watching it last night. Me too. Um, and uh, um, God help us all. So anyway, we're in this together. So let's do all of this together. So thank you so much for joining us and have a great day.